What strikes me as, as, as so true and rings so true in this Ambassador Dogra, if you can hear me, is that Pakistan yes. did walk into this with its eyes open. So the, the, the real question to ask now is how much worse is it going to get? And like Sushant Sareen also said, when the roof collapses here, it's going to be way worse than it was in Sri Lanka. Well, uh, uh, I think we are heading towards that. And there are no two questions about it. Uh, the reason is that from being a bad boy of the world, Pakistan today is an international basket case. And I'm not just talking about the rating agencies because they can go wrong. Let us look at the facts. There is no other country in the world which has got IMF uh, schemes every three years. There have been 23 yeah. bailouts by IMF since 1947. Just to give you a comparison, since 1991, India has never gone back to yeah. IMF. Yeah, that's right. Uh, let me give you another example. Uh, Pakistan is not just facing an economic crisis, it is facing an all-round crisis, yeah. which means politically there are people who cannot be trusted with taking quick, wise, balanced decisions. Because Imran Khan, his daily objective is to badmouth the politicians in power and also to abuse everyone in the army, starting from the previous army chief. Correct. He so far not attacked the new army chief. So if you cannot handle your political uh, pot, uh, how can you handle the issues of the country? Mm -hmm. The chicken price or the petrol price need not have gone to the levels that it has if decisions were taken well in time before the IMF team arrived. And now I you don't even have the time to think. So whatever IMF says, their junior officers or middle rank officers, the Prime Minister of Pakistan is just signing on the dotted line. And it's reached a but point. The, it's reached but a the greater, greater threat yes. for Pakistan at the moment and for neighboring countries like us is that when a situation like this happens, then it gives a free pass to organizations like TTP. Yeah, yeah, the absolutely. Taliban. Uh, and they are knocking at the door. Yeah. They are already present in uh, KPK and various other parts of Pakistan. So when there is chaos, the situation would be much worse than Sri Lanka. Because in Sri Lanka, people came out in anger on the streets. Yes. But here, there are people who are armed to the teeth. Absolutely. So, you know, that's, that's, that's the reason why it could be far more chaotic. And Kamar, uh, which brings me to the question about autonomy, you know, independence of policy making, all of that has gone straight out of the window. You know, whether it is the IMF's preconditions, you know, whether it is China's preconditions, they still hold 30% of Pakistan's external debt. Saudi Arabia, which as Sushant Sarin says, has been throwing money into Pakistan. They call all the shots now. Pakistan has no policy independence whatsoever at this situation. Well, Ashif, the point is that the political leadership, even Imran Khan and the, the incumbent government, they have been trying to save their political capital and delaying uh, the arrangements which were coming from the IMF. This happened back in 2019 and this happened in 21-22 as well. So this is one reason. And now, at the, and, you know, at the end of the day, they have to take those decisions because they failed to get the money from our Arab friends, from Saudi Arabia and from the UAE or from the China. So we couldn't get the loans freeze. We had to pay back the loans. Uh, and we couldn't get uh, uh, the debt restructuring. We are getting the debt restructuring, but the loan freezing option was not for us. Mm. And we couldn't get the money from Saudi Arabia and UAE, which we normally used to get. And so, and this is, the, this is what the Saudis and the Emiratis asked Pakistan to go to the IMF. So at the end of the day, when Ishaq Dar finance minister had to accept everything that came from IMF, so that's how the economy reached to this point. So, so we were depending on the Arabs. Uh, uh, and, and obviously they are exhausted by giving money this way. Okay. And uh, recently the, the Saudi finance minister... Sushant, have, Sushant Sarin wants to answer you. Sushant, go ahead. Go ahead. You had a rebuttal for that. Yeah. Jura Shiv, the problem has been, and I've said this before, in Pakistan, debt is treated like disposable income. It's yeah, not... Yeah. And the moment you start treating debt like disposable income, then you don't intend to ever return it. So when the, the Saudis ask for their money back, the first time the Saudis asked for their money back, I think an year or two back, there were horrified uh, looks on Pakistani faces. How come somebody has asked for his money back? How come the Saudis have asked for their money back? 
now the biggest grouse is against china china is such a big economy what is 30 40 billion dollars hmm. for them can't they you know give us a debt rescheduling on this debt you know after all we are such good friends of theirs what kind of friendship is china doing with us because they can't even you know agree to this kind of a debt rescheduling yeah yeah pakistanis don't understand is debt rescheduling is as bad as debt default correct the thing is that when you go in for debt rescheduling then the creditors will demand many many things from you which are going to be even more unpalatable than what they are demanding out of you right now mm. so have to understand that but just one final point i don't think look countries don't disappear because they default on that mm. there is there's an rt uh, there might even be some bloodshed but at the end of the day i don't think pakistan is going anywhere so we don't need to worry uh, uh, too much i think we will have a pakistan of the sorts we like that it's there and it's still you know not a big nuisance for us because uh, pakistan does not have any revolutionary streak in them there is no revolution coming I in pakistan come on this romanticized revolutions but they are not a revolutionary people because you know it's a one thing to get swayed by fast poetry and all that nonsense but they are not a revolutionary people so nothing will happen there will be some scenes of the sorts you saw in sri lanka but beyond that it is the people of pakistan are the most submissive people which is why the army can rule over pakistan and the bureaucracy can ride roughshod over the people 